Hey guys, this is Mr. Kellogg again here. I'm just going to show you a quick video on how to make our second layer for uh, the map project part two. Um, so I'm going to start out going to Google Maps again, uh, which is maps.google.com. If you have not logged in to Google, you're going to have to do that and make sure if you're at home and you're working on a different computer that you've logged out of anybody else's Google Maps just in case their, um, their account is open because you want to make sure that you're in your account. So I'm going to sign in. So as a reminder, it's going to come up with our newest Google Maps version, um, which they haven't updated yet, so I can't actually create my own maps with this yet um, so we have to go to return to classic Google Maps which again if we hit the uh, button over here we can see this help and feedback that button will show us where we can say return to classic Google Maps and again you have to do this just to access your own personal map so when I click that I'm back in this screen um, on the top left I'm going to my places where I'm finding my map so um, as a reminder we already have our maps created um, on the left side underneath create map you can actually see the maps that you've made in your case you probably have these few few buttons for set a home location and work location we'd obviously don't need to do that right now um, but last viewed um, you probably have just one map right here I actually have one other person's map I have the one that I created and I have a map that I made last month so I'm gonna create I'm gonna click on the one that I already created because we want to use the same map we created for the first part of the project so I'm gonna click on that And I can see I still have my same events from before on the left side that I had added um, in our last video, as well as the little shaded area around Seattle to show you how to make us um, that shaded area. Um, so the first thing we want to do if to make my new map is that I actually want to make a new layer. And if I look on the left here, I see I have a title for the layer that I've already created. And if I click on that, it gives me the edit layer name. Um, I already have this as the hotel in the corner map list. I should probably specifically show this as the hotel in the corner World War II map list. So I'm gonna make that clear so it's different from the map I'm about to make. So that layer is done. I have my map title hotel in the corner map because that's for the whole thing, but that layer specifically is the World War II map list. So now I'm gonna actually add a layer. So this big button right here that says add a layer, if I click on that, it's going to show me that I can have a whole new layer here. And it's, this layer is just like the one from before. I can add all the same things, but it's just going to be a separate layer of maps so I can see it independently of the other list. So first thing I want to do is I want to make sure it has a name. So I click on layer name. And I'm going to make sure this is titled something that's relevant for the second part of this. Um, and in this case, we're working with specifically the incarceration camps. So I'm going to put incarceration camps. Maybe I'll add them that World War II incarceration camps, just so it's clear for that. And I'm going to save that title. So now I have two different titles. So the Hotel in the Corner, World War II, and the incarceration maps. So to add to this one, notice the blue rod on the left side here. That blue is showing me that I'm in that layer specifically, and I'm not in the other layer. If I click up here, you'll notice that I'll just be in the first layer that I made. Um, you'll also notice next to the titles is a checkbox. This checkbox will actually make my list, my map disappear or reappear. So if I click on this checkbox, all of a sudden all my events disappear. And you might have noticed that over here, we're over the United States, all these map locations just aren't being shown. And basically that means that they're not viewable. They're still there, they're still in my list, but they're not viewable anymore. So if it helps, I can do that. Otherwise, I can just leave it. The key, again, is the blue part tells me which one am I adding to. Right now, I want to add to the World War II incarceration camp, so I'm going to click on that one. So now that I know I'm in that, just like before, I can add my locations. Now, for this case, we're going to be obviously focusing on the west coast of the United States, pretty much this area of the United States. So I can zoom in as much as I want, or maybe zoom out a tiny bit more. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the Den Show website. And this is the website that we were given um, on the assignment. Uh, it's very easy to get to. It's the same website as the timeline that we used before. But if you notice on the top here, it also has the map function. And this map is a fantastic resource for us to use. 
Um, the first thing I want you to notice about the map is that there are a number of different categorized uh, locations. So on the right here in the key, I can see what types of locations I have. The incarceration camps, the assembly centers, the detention centers, etc. This is going to be key for me to create my map. The other thing I can do is click on the tab on the right here that says citizenship status. And when I click on that, it'll actually highlight all of the locations uh, based on citizenship status. So just if it's a citizen or non-citizen. And if you click on those, they'll just show those specific areas. And on the bottom, the reset button will allow me to see all of them again. Okay, so in this case, obviously the blue ones are where citizens of the United States were, were placed, and the black ones are for non-citizens. Um, I do want you to notice at the top here, this box next to where it says geographic map that I'm circling right now, this box is, it will explain based on what you clicked on or what you're hovering over, it will explain to you what it is that you're looking at. And that's a key box for us to notice. Now I'm going to go back to categories. So I'm going to click on the tab that says categories so I can see the difference between these. These are going to be really important as you make your map because you have to have each independent one and specific numbers of them. So for example, we need to have all the incarceration camps. And they're, they're in red, which makes it easy to see. Makes it even easier if I click on it because all the other ones will disappear. So now I can actually just see the incarcer incarceration camps. And if I hover over one, it will give me the name of it. So if I hover over here, we see the Tool Lake incarceration camp, which we were discussing in class. Um, this shows me the, the name of it, and if I look in the top right in the box that we talked about before, it will actually give me more information about all the incarceration camps. If I want more information specifically about Tool Lake, if I click on it, it will actually give me more information. It will go to the sites area of the map. So this here gives me a lot of really good information that I'm going to need for my description in, my, in the part of my map that I'm going to make. First thing to notice is the geography part. And so it has the specific city that I should look for on Google Maps to place this. Um, it does have the date open and date closed, and those dates are always important. We're not going to be adding those to the, each description, but they're always important to notice. Um, and the description of, for the geography also comes with some explanation of the area in general, which is pretty interesting stuff. If I scroll down, I notice there's a couple other things. These two parts right here are going to be very important for us. Population description and peak population. Um, peak population, very simply, the highest population um, at the highest point when they had the most people there. We're going to need that number for every single location we put. Um, the second part, the population description, is going to give you an idea of who the people were who were in this camp. That's really key for us. We're going to have to have that information as part of the expectations for this project for each description. So we're going to need to know where they're coming from, what nationalities there are, they are, um, and that information is going to be really important to put in the description. Uh, below that, you'll notice it has some distinctive facts, which are really interesting to read. We're not going to include these in our description, but they also have a lot of really in interesting information. Specifically with Tool Lake, the incident on May 16th when an, an army sentry shot and killed a Nisei boy. Pretty interesting stuff. But we don't need that right now. So, now that I've found this spot, and I want to add this spot, um, I see that I'm here. I'm, I'm at this site. If I go back to the map, I can see generally where Tool Lake is. Um, but I actually want to be able to have a specific location to put on my map. So again, clicking back on it, I can find in the geography section the actual city. Um, you'll also notice that there are the latitude and longi longitude location for the specific area, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can actually copy and paste either of these into the Google Maps to add that location. So for me, actually we can do it with the geography part. So for latitude and longitude, I'm going to copy it. I'll show you. You can go up to File, Copy, and then I'll go into my map. So I'm back on my map, and again, I'm in the World War II incarceration camps layer. Not in my first layer, but in my second layer. Um, and I'm going to be searching for this location. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on our search box, and I'm going to hit Paste. And when I search for it, it's going to zoom way in, and it's going to give me this really specific location. Um, and if I actually zoom in more, I can kind of see some more about the area because Google Maps has a lot of information for us. And you might notice a couple things. First of all, I see that right here it says the Tool Lake Segregation Center. So it looks like it actually has a specific location for this because um, this is now a National Park Service um, area, which is pretty cool. So it actually has the website, the phone number, pretty awesome stuff here. Um, so I can actually either click on that 
that exact center, or in this case, I like the latitude and, latitude and longitude, that's a pretty cool thing to have. Um, we could add this to the map. So either way, if I click on that location, or if I click on the segregation center itself, it gives me the same option, which is add to map. So click on that, add to map. Now, first thing I notice is it's in red. Second thing I notice is that the title of it is the latitude and longitude. Not very helpful. I don't really want the latitude and longitude. I want to put the name of this exact site. So clicking on it will allow me to edit. And remember, our pencil allows us to edit the information about this. So if I click edit, now I can put in that this is the tool lake uh, incarceration camp. And I can go back to my Densho site just to make sure that I'm right about this tool lake incarceration camp. Good, I got that right. So that's in the right spot. For my description, I want to make sure I add some key facts. And you'll notice in your expectations that I'm going to need to add a description of the population. And I don't want to copy and paste this. I want to explain it, partly because I don't need all of this information that they include in the population description, but also because we don't want to be plagiarizing. We want to use our own words for this. But we also want to just have the peak population. Peak population, we can simply copy and paste. Um, so I'm going to include information about the population. For right now, I have the peak population, so I'm going to put that part. Whoops. If it's going to let me. Well, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm going to have to write it myself. So it's pretty easy to do. 18,789. Okay. So I'm going to include this 789, um, the peak population. And then I'm also going to be including other information about that. Oops. I read that guy pasted it. Um, so I might add as well with specifically who the people were. Um, and you'll notice again, go look at your expectations. Um, need to be clear about what nationalities of the people that were included. And again, all that information is on the Denso site. So it's going to give me all that information that I need. So now that I have this location, I can hit save. I've got it set up. Um, the one other thing I'm going to have to make sure now that it's in place is what look what. Um, specific indicator I want to use. And in this case, there's already a little um, arrow, the normal um, Google Maps arrow. Uh, but, in, but what we have to do for this project, we have to make sure that we use the same symbols for the same types of camps. So if we go back to the Den Show map, and at the, no, at the top of this site, I'm, I see it says back to map, which is nice. Um, if we look at it, we remember they have all the different symbols. So the incarceration camps were all the red circles. Department of Justice internment camps are the stars. Um, with, the, with the outline, and the U.S. Army internment camps are the regular stars. Um, so what I can do for this is I can actually go ahead and say, okay, well, each of these locations will have its own symbol. I don't need to use the same ones that they have here on Densho, but I do need to use a uniform one that will be the same for that type of location. So for example, incarceration camps. I know Tool Lake is an incarceration camp, so it should have the same symbol as the rest of the incarceration camps, just the way that this Den Show map has made it. So if I go back into my map, I need to decide, okay, what am I going to do for my incarceration camp? Um, to change it, I have to go, have to hover over the Tool Lake incarceration camp like before, hover over the title, and click the paint bucket. And that'll give me the option for icons and for colors. So again, we want to have a uniformity in terms of having all the same icon and color for the type of camp. So in this case, it's incarceration camp. Maybe I want to choose something that's more relevant that I could find in our area over here. So incarceration camp, oh, this seems like kind of intense stuff. Maybe I'll just use this symbol, Ex uh, exclamation points, I'll hit OK, and that's my symbol. Oops. That's my symbol for this specific um, incarceration camp. I'm starting to lose my screen here. Sorry about this, guys. Let me try to get out of this before it gets too convoluted. OK. Um, that should give you the basics of this. Um, again, uh, the key is to use the Densho site. Make sure you have each of these and check your expectations because there are a lot of things that you're going to need to add um, to make sure you have all of it. Um, and again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, if you need any more help as well, make sure you re-watch the video because that will help you as well. All right, that should do it. Good luck, guys.